hello, hello, happy Saturday, happy Sabbath. This is definitely a day that the Lord has made. Can I get a hallelujah, somebody? We've made it through another week, another day. I mean, the, oh my God, this year is just flying by. I mean, the 11 day already, 111, 20. This is why we give God praises because we're here. I mean, we are here. So thank you guys for tuning in. For those that's going to tune in later, many gratitude and more than anything. And I love you guys. I mean, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I mean, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining in, being a part of this Saturday night prayer. So uh, I know last week we did a little check-in. We did a check-in. Uh, I want to do a check-in this this today as well. I mean, we got our hot topic, guilty pleasures. I mean, we're going to dive into it, but I want to do a quick check-in. So with that being said, uh, all my, my baby boomers, those that was born around the 1950s, you know, if you're born around the 1950s, you know, say what's up to me, say hello, say hallelujah, say amen, whatever you want to say. Um, those that was born in the 1960s, those of the, the, the 60s, the, um, the hippies, the hippie era. You know, anybody in, in here from the 60s, say what's up, give me a shout out. I mean, we're doing our check-in. All my 70 babies, myself included, 1978 represent my 70s baby. I like to call that little, uh, little disco, little disco era. Give me a shout out real quick, just do a, a check-in with you. My 80s baby. My, oh, my 80s. Oh, 80s was a was one heck of a year. But I think about hip hop. You know what I mean? It's all my hip hoppers. You know, my 1980s babies. You know, give me a shout out. Uh, the 90s. I love the 90s, right? I was born in the 70s. I was brought up in the 80s. But I was raised a 90s baby. All that good music. I think about music in the 90s. You know what I mean? I think about music and fashions. But all my 90s babies, those that was born in the 1990s, Give me a shout out on today. Uh, and my millenniums, uh, those that was born around the, in the 2000, 2000 plus, in the 2000, from 2000, 2009, and from 2010 up in 2019, you know, y'all some, you know, might be a little bitty, you know, from 2010, 2019, but everybody give me a shout out each decade. And the reason why I'm doing this because we have reached another decade i mean 2020 things is fast forward and what god is revealing in my my mind my soul my spirit each decade represents something special so often right we want to look at the year we want to we want to make and break our lifestyle when it comes to a year oh 2020 it, it wasn't the best when 2020 get here right 2021 wasn't the best Maybe 2022 get here, right? Oh, 2022 was pretty good. So on and so forth. I'm saying all of this because that's how we measure ourselves. Each decade, are, are we progressing or are we digressing? Each decade should represent something. But most importantly, each year of that decade should be our stepping stone. I'm going to say it again. Each year of that decade should be our stepping stone for greatness. So I'm here to tell somebody in 2020, this is the first year of a new decade. So do not measure your success and your failures in this year alone. Please don't do that. Don't do yourself this justice. And don't get your head up hat and your chest all puffed out if you have an awesome 2020 year. Because you never know how your 2021 may be. I bring all this up because this is how we measure our steps. This is how we measure our growth. And I'm here to tell somebody on the day, 2020 is a new year to, to, to have new memories, to have new goals, to get goals accomplished. And then you measure your steps for the next 10 years. That's how you're going to win. That's how you're going to get clear vision. That's 2020, right? Clear vision. That's how you're going to get clear vision. You can't just put everything in one year, but you can prepare starting off with this year. Let this year be your stepping stone. Let this year be the year that you do believe like never before. Your faith increases like never before. You do get structured and you get disciplined so you can have obedience like never before. Let this be the year to start it off. All of us, all of us, all of us, let this be the year to structure ourselves. 
I say this because God has so many things in store and it's starting with this year and we can't miss the mark. This is why he put on my spirit guilty pleasures because we all done dealt with it, dealing with it, dealing with it, gonna deal with it. I mean, it's just the reality of life, but we got to have some structure. <laughs> we got to have some structure. We got to have some, some, some discipline. We got to have knowledge more than anything. I mean, we have to have knowledge on what's taking place in this thing called life. So before I once again, before I really dig into this guilty pleasure, I really, really encourage somebody let this first year of this decade be the, the new year for the rest of your life. I mean, we all got to have a plan. We all got to have a goal. We got to have a, 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 a short time, short time goal and a long time goal. I mean, but let this be the clear vision that you've been praying about. Don't put all your eggs in one basket for 2020. You're going to do yourself in, un injustice. But let this be the year where you can measure your steps, where you can have clear vision. That way you don't get bogged down with, with uh, anxiety because everything ain't working out the way you see it in one year. But let this be the, the stepping stone for the rest of your life. So when you look back at the 10 years, once we hit 2030 and you look back, you will know where you started. This is why you got to know where you're going in 2020, because you got to know where you're headed back time you get to 2030. Hallelujah. 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 That's a, just a hallelujah moment. And I thank you guys once again for joining in. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Guilty pleasure. This ain't for everybody. This ain't for everybody. Because first and foremost, everybody ain't guilty off the things that they do. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about, some people going to be like, well, this is normal for me or... You know, this is what I do on a regular. Why am I feeling guilty? And think about it, right? Each is own. But my thing is let the truth be the truth and let the word of God be the final authority. If it convicts somebody, if it heals somebody, if it makes somebody think, if it renews somebody's mind, so be it. Let the chips fall where they may. Guess what? Because one man water, I mean, one man plant, the other man water, and God get the increase. So I don't know. What divine timing this topic is in your life. But I believe that God is going to get the increase. Like I said, um, guilty pleasures. Once again, a couple definitions about guilty pleasures. Uh, first one, when you enjoy doing something, but are ashamed to admit it to someone you do it. You do something, right? I mean, you do it. I mean, but you ashamed to do it. You ashamed to tell somebody, man, this is what I do. You know, somebody talking about something. Uh, yeah, did, you, did you hear what they be doing? Did you hear about what they be doing? And then deep down, you be like, dang, I hope they don't find out about me. My, my little secrets, my little thoughts. I mean, that's that's a guilty pleasure, right? Once again, you're ashamed to admit it, but you really enjoy what you do. The other one, and this right here is a really powerful one because this right here, I think about our walk in life, right? Uh, here, here we go. Something you should not like, but you like it anyway. Something you should not like, but you like anyway. And this right here hits my soul because I got entangled up so many times in my life. <laughs> in my life, where I should not be liking something, but I like it anyway. And I know it's against my, my, my beliefs. I know it's against my, my background. I know it's against my character. I know it's against what my heart really do feel. But guess what? I'm stuck on stupid. I done got a hold on to something, and now that whatever it is got a hold on to me, so it's like a little tug of war. You know what I mean? It's a little tug of war. But something you should not like, but you like it anyway. So that's what I want to really dig into, guilty pleasures. Something you should not like. And once again, this is not going to hit everybody hard. This is not going to just touch everybody's feelings and emotions. This ain't going to change everybody's mind for the simple fact some people like it is what it is. I don't find anything guilty with this. This is just a part of my life. And once again, if that's you, God bless you. But for those, but for those that's been battling, <laughs> that's been battling with something inside of you that's greater than you. For those that's been battling with trying to burst out to be to, to greatness. For those that's trying to raise up in life and and want that monkey off your back. This is for you on the day. Guilty pleasures.
And real quick, I got like a bunch of uh, uh, 10 things. I'm going to go run it down because I don't want to be all day. I know the football game on, and I'm trying to get my football in this evening to get a, ch- get a chance to watch some football. So even though my Bears ain't playing, oh, well. Uh, but 10 things, right? They may hit you. This may not hit you. Here we go. A snack. A snack in a midnight hour. For all my snackers, knowing that you shouldn't be eating no snacks in a midnight hour, but you do it because you like it, right? I mean, you wake up, you wake up a little hungry. I mean, that's a guilty pleasure. You like it, but you like, I know I should not be doing it, but you find yourself doing it anyway. Another one, spying on social media. A lot of people do that one, and I done caught some people doing that one. Spying on social media. And you might be like, how is that a guilty pleasure? When you walk into somebody's crib and they hurry up and turn out their computer screen, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, you know, I just saw you on social media. Well, why you don't, well, I'm, I'm thinking my man, like, why you don't say anything? Why you don't say hello to somebody? Why you don't like a picture? You know what I mean? And you on there. That's, you know, for some people, that's a guilty pleasure. They just don't want nobody to know they on social media, but they know everybody's business. A cigarette after a meal. This is for all my smokers. You know, once again, this ain't for everybody. Some people just like smoking. You know, it is what it is. But for those that, you know, tired of smoking, for those that's ready to quit for health reasons, things of that nature, I mean, that can be a guilty pleasure, especially after a meal, right? I, like, that's like a, um, when you smoke, when you a, a cigarette smoker and you smoke on a regular, then you eat a meal, that cigarette like a dessert. You know what I mean? But that's a guilty pleasure. Uh, here we go. Watching porno. Watching porn, that's a guilty pleasure for somebody. Once again, each his own. Some people are like, hey, you know what? That's just how I get out. I like a little porn. Ain't nothing, with porn. nothing wrong with porn in my life, and I get it. Uh, each his own. But for a lot of people, a lot of people, that's a guilty pleasure. A lot of people like that porn. They got it on their phone, whatever it is, and then they hurry up and uh, erase the history. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they erase the history just in case they kid want to use the phone one day or they significant other one to use the phone. A guilty pleasure. Here go another one. Masturbation. Masturbation. And, and sometimes masturbation and um, porn go hand in hand for some people. But masturbation, some people are like, hey, you know what? That's just a normal thing in life. You know what I mean? It's my body. I get all that. But for a lot of people, a lot of people don't want people to know they're masturbating. You know what I mean? They do everything underneath the sun to make sure that they have that image of uh, just cleanness. You know what I mean? But that is a guilty, guilty pleasure for so many people that fight against that, that, that want to be wholesome, that want to be pure, that want to be cleansed. For that, for that future husband or that future wife, but you find yourself playing with yourself because you, you, you get a little hot. That's a guilty pleasure for some people. Flirting. Flirting. That's a guilty pleasure for a lot of different people, right? Flirting. You just flirt because it's fun. A guilty pleasure. You know you shouldn't be flirting. You know you married. You know you're in that relationship, but you find yourself flirting. You ain't even trying to go walk home with nobody or, or take nobody home. But it's a guilty pleasure, something that you like to do, but you don't want people to know that you're doing it. Why? Maybe you're a deacon on a, uh, a, 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 a deacon at church, or maybe you're a CEO at, at, at your job, or, or a manager or something. You don't want people to know certain things about you. You want to have a certain image. You got that certain game face, but you're a flirter. You're playing with people's emotions. They think they're going to find somebody good. But you get the number and you walk away. Or you, you you know what it is. You know how it is when you flirt. You get it. Lusting. Now, this is a good one right here. Because the first thing that we want to go straight to cheating, but we forget that lust is a sin all by itself. We have so many people lusting over the next person wife, over the next person husband. You got people lusting at the preacher. You got uh, people lusting at the, the choir members. You got people lusting at the teacher. You got lust all in us. We ain't touch nobody, but it's all in us. It's in our thoughts. It's starting to affect what our, our bodies, our 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 our, our 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 chemicals in our body. Now we getting a little, uh, feeling a little hot, getting a little erect. Why? Because we're lusty. Now our mind is all clogged, but we ain't telling nobody, right? We act like we all normal. We we look at that coworker like, hey, hey, friend, but all but we want to just jump that coworker bone. Guilty pleasure. 
I'm almost out of here with the um, with the topics real quick. Cheating. We we we, we hit up um, lusting and a flirting, but cheating. Some of us is just just oh my god, just cheaters by nature, cheaters by blood. We cheat, 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 but we act like we just Mother Teresa. You know what I mean? Act like we ain't doing nothing. I um, mean, we supposed to be at, uh, at work, don't go to work. We we out with whoever. We supposed to come straight home for work, but we make a pit stop. I mean, but we we come back home to our families like we ain't done nothing. Like we ain't done nothing. Guilty pleasure. Two more, and then we're going to get down to some how we can really help with some of these issues. Uh, manipulation. This right here actually is a, a pet peeve of mine. I hate people that man, manipulate people. Uh, I really, I mean, when I say hate, I mean like holy anger type of hate because you're, 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 you're like a wrecking ball in somebody's life. I'll, I'll call that person a spiritual assassin when you manipulate somebody, when you play mind games with somebody. But a lot of people play mind games, do these manipulations. I mean, they get off on, man, on manipulating people, having people think one way, but it's, the reality is another way. I cannot stand that, but that's a guilty pleasure for people because they know that they're affecting people and at the same token, they act like they loving them. And, and you know, what, 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 what my man say, oh, what was it? Uh, Capone Sweet. He said, people will dap you and dagger you with the same hand. They'll dap you, right? You know how people come, hey, what up, man? Dap. But then they get a knife in and dagger you. They stab you with the same hand. That's manipulation. People will dap, will dap you and dagger you with the same hand. Why? Because they guilty and they find pleasure out of it. They know they shouldn't do it, but guess what? They do it anyway. And last but not least, procrastination. We have so many people procrastinate on getting a life in order. They know it, but they rather play versus work. They rather chill versus uh, write down goals and, and fulfill dreams. Guilty pleasure, then they feel some type of way when a new day go back, a new month go back, a new season go back, a new year go back. Now they're feeling guilty. Why? Because of the pleasure. Guilty pleasures. Guilty pleasures. Well, let's 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 go ahead and hit some topics. I mean, let's go ahead and break this down so we can get out of here. Um, at the end of the day, everything that I stated, everything that I stated on today, it will leave us in bondage. Whatever, and then I'm too, I like, only named 10 things real quick. I only named 10 things. What about what's on your list? <laughs> what about that guilty pleasure on your list? And whatever I did not say, but you have something on your list. What is it? Whatever, whatever it may be. I mean, it's like opening up Pandora box. I mean, we, we crack it open, right? We think we can manage it by cracking things open. But before we know it, things just flat open completely. It flies open. Because it's, that's what bondage is. People ain't going to let you know you're about to be in bondage. Things definitely can't tell you about to be in bondage until it happens, until it consumes you, until it consumes your thoughts, until it consumes your actions, until it consumes your patterns, the way you act and react. Guilty pleasures end up in bondage. Period. It's bondage, it's Pandora box, and I encourage somebody close the box because you have no control over the, 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 the context inside of the box. You can only see what you can see on the surface. You don't know what lies underneath until it comes out. And then what, what happens once it comes out? That's why I said earlier, uh, this, it's important to know where you're going. It's important to do a check-in. It's important to really time, time frame your life, especially when it comes to decades. That's how we measure ourselves. If we if we look back at each decade, forget each year right now. Look back at the decades over your life, the things that's been holding you down in bondage. More than likely, it was something that you don't want to do anymore, but you find yourself finding pleasure in it. Why? Because you 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 cracked open that box. So I'm here to tell somebody, you have the power, first and foremost to close the box right now. Do not allow anything new to infiltrate your spirit. Do not allow anything new to infiltrate your mind. Do not allow anything new to infiltrate your heart, spirit, soul, everything in, that's, that's the essence of you. Anything new, don't allow. If it's not of God, if it's not of your character, 
Don't allow anything new. So now you check the new. Now you can start dealing with the old, the old man, the old ways, the old habits, the old thoughts. We have the power. We have the power. We have the power. But it's going to take conviction. You got to have a conviction. That's why I said earlier, this ain't for everybody. A lot of people don't care about what I'm saying right now. Why? Because they're not guilty to begin with. Or even if they're guilty, they're going to they gonna let that pleasure supersede itself. It's just the reality. And I get it. I was there. You know how many people told me something that can save my life at the earlier stages of my life? And I bluntly disregarded it. For one reason, I, I was not convicted to do anything different. Until you get convicted. And what is conviction? An overwhelming belief. You know what you know. You believe what you believe. You will die for that belief. You will change your life for that belief. You will start changing your ways and your behaviors because of that belief. You will start changing your circle because of that belief. You will start meditating on what, on what you're believing to begin with. That's conviction when you know what you know. You say, yes, I like it, but I'm tired of doing what I do. But now I'm finding a middle ground, which is called obedience. And I'm going to work towards being delivered. I'm going to work towards closing this Pandora box. For some of us, I'm going to work closing on this Pandora box for once and for all. Conviction. Until we get convicted, we're going to find these next 10 years going back, and then we're going to find ourselves older, tired, more depressed, more sad, more frustrated. Why? Guilty pleasures. Guilty pleasures. It's just what it is, right? It's just what it is. Until you get convicted, I can say I can inspire somebody all day. I can make somebody happy all day. I can give somebody joy all day. I can motivate them all day. But until you get convicted, your life is going to stay the same. Until you get convicted, your thoughts is going to stay the same. Until you get convicted, you will never be able to interrupt your patterns. You got, we was born into this life. We were shaped into this life. So it's going to take conviction to get us out of this. And last but not least, before we pray, we can't serve two masters. We just can't serve two masters. You're going to love one, you're going to hate the other. Have you ever tried to play a balancing act? Especially like with two, well, I don't know how it is. And I guess it's easy to have multiple girlfriends now. I, I, then again, I don't know. But I remember back in the day, um, I, I love I love testifying, right? I remember back in the day, I want to say in 1992, I was in eighth grade. The reason why I remember so much because I called myself playing with two girls, right? And my foolish self had two girls in the same neighborhood. I had one actually on the same block. Uh, I lived on 119th of Harvard. I had a, a girlfriend on, a, on 119th of Harvard, like three blocks, I mean, three houses from my, my house. And then I had another girl like on 121st of Harvard, like two blocks up. All that being said, I got caught up. I got caught up because I was trying to play a balancing act. I was trying to, to, to woo this girl. I was trying to woo that girl. Telling this girl the same thing I'm telling that girl. I mean, I'm trying right until I got caught up. Why? Because my energy changed even at the age of 14. Things change and people ain't dumb, especially after a while. And I remember so clearly that the, the young lady said, how you going to try to play me? I'm Miss 92, which is 1992. I'm I'm Miss 92. Yeah, I guess that was pretty cool for her to say back then. It was only 1992. But I was trying to do two things. I was trying to live two lifestyles. I was trying to I was trying to get myself uh, in areas where I have I had no business giving. Why? Because I was out of order. I was off balance. I was I was unstable. You can't serve two masters. You're gonna find yourself unstable. You're going to find yourself lacking passion. You're going to find yourself lacking authority. You're going to find yourself lacking power. You're going to find yourself lacking motivation. You're going to find yourself at lack. Why? Because you cannot serve two masters. So I ask you on a day, what master are you going to serve this year? Are you going to serve your God or are you going to serve yourself? Aren't you tired of being governed by your, your addictions? Aren't you tired of being governed by your, your thoughts and your actions and your desires? Aren't you tired of you being governed? You're saying 
this year gonna be different from last year, but you brought so many bad habits into this year. So because why? Because you've been governed by them. You can say whatever you want to say, how long you want to say it, but you're gonna find yourself being governed. Versus you governing whatever the situation is or governing whatever the thing is. That's why you can't serve two masses. You got to govern it. You got to govern it. You got to. If not, you lose. Who tired of losing? I can't lose another thing in my life no more. At least not by my hands. Because, you know, this is life, right? We're going to lose things. But not by these two hands. Never again will I open up that box and be my own wrecking ball. Wreck, wrecking, wreck shopping everything in my life off these two hands, off my lack of conviction, off my last lack of discipline, off these two hands. I'm done. I'm done. That's why I told myself coming into last year, healthy relationships only. I knew I had to lead that decade with healthy relationships only because this the whole decade of last decade, it was my transition, you know? It was my transition. It was my transition and I kicked it, I scream and I fight to be in the position that I'm here today and I thank God because now I understand how to govern. And once you learn how to govern, you will find things running smooth. You So often we want to blame the devil for everything. We give the devil too much credit. I'm sorry. The devil be mad sometimes. Like, I ain't didn't do that one. I mean, we give the devil too much credit. Why? Because we're not governing versus things governing us. We got to stop it. We got to stop it. So let us pray. Father God, I come right now to say thank you for another Saturday night prayer. I thank you for all my prayer warriors, God. I, I, I thank you for all those that's touching and agreeing with me right now, Father God. I, I thank you, God, for allowing us an atmosphere, a safe haven, God. Thank you for a safe haven where we can come and worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth, where we cannot be judged, where we can be healed, where we can be touched by your spirit, God. So, Father God, I pray for a new normal in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you interrupt our patterns, you convict us. Us, and, and, and you just change our lives the way we desire it to be changed to begin with God. So I pray in the mighty name of Yahshua for a new normal, a new way of thinking, a new way of responding, just a new way of overall living as we already know our ways don't work, God. So I pray that you open up the floodgates. I pray, Father God, right now for a new normal. We may be dealing with the same people. We may be dealing with the same circumstances, but I pray for a new normal inside of us so we can govern these things that's trying to govern us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I pray for this new normal. I pray for this new spirit. I pray for this new, this new thought pattern, God. A newness. A newness, God. I pray that we can understand how important a decade is, God. And I pray that we can get the concept in this year, God, so we can understand that this is a new year, that this is the beginning of a new decade, that time is really on our side, that if we seek you diligently, God, you will multiply our days, God. If we seek you diligently, God, you will restore us. If, you, if we seek you diligently, your word says, your word says, why die as a man, um, why die as a mere mortal? When I, when I made you to be a God, you created us to be a God, the little G. Not the big G, but the little G. You created us to have dominion. You created this. You created us to have dominion. So why are we dying as mere mortals when you created us to be a God? So, Father God, I pray that that wakes somebody up with a new normal. Yes, they are king. Yes, they are queen. Why? Because you created them to be a God in the image and likeness of you, God. Father God, I pray that we can separate the facts and the fiction. We've been lied to for so long by some of everybody from the White House to the to the pulpit to the to the uh, in our own houses. And our upbringing, and our bloodline, and our and our in the news, we have been victimized for so long. When fictions are facts, and when facts are fiction, it's all tangled up. We don't know what to believe in no more. 
We don't know what to believe in. We don't know to believe in Jesus or not to believe in Jesus. We don't know to believe in the Bible or not believe in the Bible. So, Father God, I pray. I pray. You separate the facts and fiction, God. It's, I pray in your word, you say you're going to separate the weeks and the tear. So, Father God, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that we can be ye steadfast, God. I pray that we can be unmovable. I pray that we can stand in our rightful position as you pluck out things around us. The fact and the fiction, the wheat and the tear. You be plucking things out, 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 out of us. The things that's in us. The wheat and the tear, the fact and the fiction. All these things, Father God, I pray that you pluck out. You plug it out. Because truth be told, if we can do it, it already be done, God. So many of us are willing but our flesh is weak, God. So I pray that you lift our spirit to help conquer this flesh. Hallelujah. Last but not least, Father God, your word says warning comes before destruction. I pray that we can recognize the warning signals, God. I pray in the name of Yahshua that we can recognize the warning signals that surround us. Because if warning comes before destruction, and if, if somebody hear this, and they know that it is a guilty pleasure. They know that they gotta they gotta change their life. They gotta they gotta reform how they do things and reframe how they do things and, and reshift how they do things. So I pray, Father God, if 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 warning do really comes before destruction, I pray that whoever needs to hear this get this warning right now. That they don't lose another day off their life. They don't lose another peaceful moment out of their life. They don't move. They don't. They don't leave a a a, a moment of a movement. Cause this is a moment of a movement from you. So I pray that they can get this warning sign. That they can get this warning signal. That not only you love them, but you're choosing to teach them and correct them in your truth, God. So, God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we lift you up, we magnify your name, we say glory, we say worthy is the Lamb, we say hallelujah, we say thank you, Jesus, we say King of kings and Lord of lords, we say thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen and amen. I thank you guys. I thank you. I thank you. I love you. Oh my God. I mean, two weeks strong. I mean, we all have dealt with some guilty pleasures. I mean, it's just the reality. It's the reality of life. But I tell you now, warning do comes before destruction. If you really, if you really said yes in your soul, if you really said yes in your soul, now you gotta start aligning up in your flesh, start aligning up in your actions. And not saying you're not doing it already, but keep pressing. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Don't stop. This is day year one for the next 10 years. This is the, the root. This is the foundation that God is doing for the next 10 years of your life. Hallelujah. I feel a prophetic spirit. This is day one, a uh, new year for the next 10 years of your life. God is laying a foundation through your works. You already believe, but he's doing a works in your feet, in your hands. That's what he's doing the works in. So people can know he's God. You already know he's God, but he want people. He want people to know that he's God and he's God alone. And he's going to use you and I as his walking testimony. Hey, I love you guys. God bless. Um, I will not be here next Saturday. I'll be out of commission. I'll be celebrating. So keep me in prayer. I will see you guys in the next two Saturdays. Uh, the last, I think it's the last Saturday of the month. So I'm, once again, I will not be here next Saturday. I'll see you guys in the next couple weeks. Keep me in prayer. Hey, I love you. Affect your day. Don't let your day affect you. God bless.